For the first 12 installments, The Legend of Zelda has been a vibrant, lighthearted, and cartoony franchise, but for their 13th game, Nintendo opted for a much more realistic, darker, and mature Zelda title. The first and only Zelda title to be rated T for Teen on the ESRB, and ages 12 and up by the Peggy rating system, for containing scenes of animated blood and fantasy violence. And for the first time ever, the states received a Zelda console game before Japan. This is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Iceberg. The Beginning and the End Twilight Princess was originally going to be a GameCube exclusive only. However, it was delayed by Nintendo so that the developers have enough time to refine it, add a few more things to it, and then port it to the Nintendo Wii as well. The game ended up being a launch title for the Wii, and at the same time, the GameCube version ended up being the last first-party game that was ever released for the console. So, in an ironic way, the game marked the beginning of one console and the end of another. The Second Best The debate of which Zelda game is the best is always going to be a divisive topic among fans. However, Twilight Princess was the best-selling Zelda game of all time for over a decade after its release, as it sold almost 9 million copies by the year of 2015. It only lost that title after Breath of the Wild was released in 2018, which is not a surprise given how influential and immensely well received that game was. The gap is pretty large though, as Breath of the Wild ended up selling over 27 million copies, which even earned it a spot on the list of the best-selling video games of all time. Manga Series Twilight Princess received a manga adaptation penned and illustrated by Akira Himikawa. However, it started almost 10 years after the original release of the game, and coincided only with the HD remake of the game that was released on the Wii U. The manga ran from 2016 and only concluded this year on January 30th. Spin-offs Twilight Princess has two spin-offs, one of them is Link's Crossbow Training, which is a shooting video game that was bundled with the Wii Zapper as a way to introduce players to it, and it was the first game to use the Zapper at the time of its release as well. It was said that the team originally planned to make a direct sequel of Twilight Princess, but the sequel was unfortunately sidelined to work on this game instead. The game is pretty simple and follows Link as he perfects his crossbow marksmanship, and it reuses many assets from the Twilight Princess, such as enemies, environments, and more. The dev team originally wanted the game to have more bosses and a larger story, but Shigeru Miyamoto was opposed to that idea, and told the team to make it a simpler game instead, giving them a list of do nots that included things like including cinematics or having an epic tale as the game's narrative. He simply wanted it to be an easy and accessible shooter that made use of the Twilight Princess's rich world, but did not take itself as seriously as a Zelda game. The game is also one of the only six Zelda games that have Link's name in the title, others being Adventure of Link, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, A Link Between Worlds, and Link Faces of Evil. The other spin-off of the game is called My Nintendo Pie Cross Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Long title. It was made to accompany the launch of the My Nintendo Loyalty Program, and was a Pie Cross puzzle game developed for the Nintendo 3DS. There are no more spin-offs for this particular game in the series, but Midna, Zant, and Agatha all appeared as playable warriors in the Hyrule Warriors game, which was a crossover game that brought together many Legend of Zelda characters. The Lord of the Rings The original Legend of Zelda game was inspired by the legendary author J.R.R. Tolkien. In the Lord of the Rings novels, which inspired the developers and helped them create the world in which Link embarks on his adventures. Twilight Princess, on the other hand, is inspired by the Lord of the Rings movies, which had just come out at the time of the game's development and were very popular. The movie, since it was visually remarkable, alongside being a general great story like the novels, helped the developers to envision a new world for the game that had a good blend of fantasy and realism combined unlike the cartoonish Wind Waker that had come out before it. What could have been? 
Twilight Princess is made from the same team that worked on The Wind Waker, and the game was first titled The Wind Waker 2. It was going to have similar cel-shaded graphics, and it wouldn't have been too different from the previous game. However, Nintendo of America spoke to the game's director, saying that they believed the sales of Wind Waker were too low because of its cartoonish appearance, and that such an art style would make people think that the game is meant for children. Concerned after hearing this feedback, the director, Eiji Aonuma, wanted to create a realistic Zelda game, but Miyamoto was a bit hesitant about the game's presentation being too different from the rest of the franchise. And eventually, the team settled on trying to add innovative features to the game to make it stand out rather than making it overly realistic. There is no bad ending here for anyone, because The Wind Waker did receive a true sequel on the Nintendo DS later called The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, which maintained the cartoonish art style of its original. Gateway to Homebrew the Nintendo version of Twilight Princess has a buffer overflow vulnerability that gave birth to an exploit called the Twilight Hack. This hack allowed an execution of custom code from an SD card on the console with the use of a fake save file that would cause the game to load unofficial code. This code contained software in the ELF format and that allowed users to run homebrew applications directly on the Wii console. Future Wii updates eventually stopped this from happening, and the vulnerability was patched out over time. Maker. Yes, Rom? Remember to remind people to do the algorithm thing. Rom, they already know to like and subscribe and leave a comment. You are welcome. <sighs> Ungrateful son of a- Twilight Princess HD. The HD remaster of Twilight Princess has more than just better visuals. The GameCube version of the game's controls were carried onto the Wii U version gamepad, and certain tweaks were made which improved certain things like the underwater gameplay of the game. Some of the cutscenes were sped up, and things like collecting tiers of light were reduced to avoid repetition. And lastly, the Wolf Link amiibo was created for the game that unlocked in-game content and could carry some of the data over to Breath of the Wild as well. There were also several other Zelda-related amiibos that were supported by the game, such as Link and Toon Link amiibos, which replenished arrows. Zelda and Sheik amiibos restored Link's health, and a Ganondorf amiibo that forces Link to take twice the amount of damage he would normally take. Cut Content and Issues The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess has a bunch of cut and unused content, as well as some issues between the different versions as well. First of all, the Wii version of the game was rushed, so it could come out right alongside the console's release. As a result, it had a number of glitches and did not have the Canadian, French, and Latin American Spanish translations. These missing features and fixes were only applied with a patch in early 2007. There is a debug room that was accidentally left intact in the game. In the 1.0 release of the game, it can be accessed in the Cave of Ordeals by putting out the torches on a floor with the Gale Boomerang. That unlocks a lower floor, and it allows you to easily traverse the cave system without having to fight enemies. There is a conventional debug mode as well that can be accessed by manipulating the ISO file on the GameCube version of the game, which has several things that players can mess around with. A canon glitch in the basement of the sanctuary in Kakariko exists in version 1.0 of the Wii port. When you go there and Shad is present, save your game and quit. When you load back in, you will be permanently trapped in the room with no way out. The game warps Shad to the top of the stairs, and the game thinks he can still see you, which disables your ability to warp the cannon out. There are also two glitches based on warping. The first one is related to the underwater gameplay. In general, warping underwater is restricted, but due to a glitch, the map's screen warp button isn't disabled, and that allows you to warp underwater. Doing this under specific circumstances soft locks the game. The second one is a map glitch that makes it possible to interrupt Midna's warp sequence, and that disables several loading zones around the map. Although certain ways to do this were patched out, it's still one of the glitches that are possible even in some of the later revisions of the game, just through different methods. Furthermore, 
Unrelated to warping, there's a glitch that allows you to reach a loading zone from the North Hyrule Field to Upper Zora's River in the North American Wii port of the game. Another glitch allows you to freeze the game while starting a snow peak surf race by standing next to Yito and hitting the leaf tree with the ball and chain. This causes Yito to initiate conversation about the race, but since the leaf falling cutscene gets interrupted by Yito, the game completely freezes. Then we have an iron boots glitch, where you can unequip the item just when Link is getting pulled towards a magnetic surface. This makes it possible to walk around as if Link is still wearing the boots, but at his normal speed. This glitch was fixed for most versions, but can still be pulled off in some of them. Lastly, you can skip the Postman cutscenes because the triggers for the Postman are so little that you can just jump over them completely. Like most other glitches, this was eventually patched out. The game has a long list of unused content, some of which is still left inside the game's files. There are unused areas, such as the Throne Room folder, which has an area called Room 10, which has a unique Zant actor and a cutscene. Since the room is incomplete, you cannot interact with that character. Other unused rooms include a test area seemingly meant for the Darkhammer boss fight, a camp test area, and some text within the files implies that some map files were deleted from the final release of the game. Other than unused and deleted map files, there are a few models, pieces of music, sound effects, text, some cutscenes, and some animations that are completely unused or even deleted outright. Unfortunately, none of it seems to be particularly fleshed out. There's hardly any visual forms from this content. Most of it is only present and evident within text files. And speaking of text, a lot of dialogue in the game has been left unused, and all of it has been extracted by the fans over time. Distracting the Big Bad You can distract the final boss when you fight him and get a few cheap hits in in his moment of confusion. All that you need to do is cast the fishing rod. This will distract him for a few seconds and you can get a bunch of hits in in the process. Midna's Speech Midna speaks complete gibberish in the game. However, if her voice clips are extracted and placed together in the correct order, the phrases can be understood. Which one will it be? Have you made up your mind? I'll take you there with my power. What do you think happened to those who try to rule with sacred magic? I have a request. Would you find a mirror? Don't go running off. I'll be watching. I guess you aren't stupid. The voice lines are spoken by a Japanese voice actress called Akiko Kuamoto and are recorded in English. Control the Kuko In the majority of these Zelda games, if you hit the Kukos, you get attacked. However, in Twilight Princess, hitting Kukos is rewarded. All that you need to do is get 8 hits on the Kuko, and this will give you the ability to temporarily control it for a short time. Breath of the Wild Easter Egg In the HD remaster of Twilight Princess, you can find screenshots of Breath of the Wild inside Chudley's Fine Good and Trinket's Emporium. At the time, the game was unnamed, but it was actively in development. Ilya and Link Usually, the implied love interest for Link in every different timeline within the franchise happens to be Zelda. However, this time around, that character seems to be Ilya because the two of them grow up together, are very close, and Link is as motivated to rescue her as he is for rescuing the Ordon children, who are a central part of the game's story. However, relying solely on the game's narrative, it's unknown whether their relationship is indeed that of romance or just a platonic love and admiration. Accidental Aid one of the most infamous twists in the game's story is when in an attempt to stop Link, Zant drives a shadow crystal into Link's forehead, and this locks him into his wolf form. But what he didn't expect was that soon afterwards, Wolf Link and Midna find the Master Sword, and its power removes the shard out of Link's forehead, which makes him a normal human being again. But that's not all. Midna realized that the shard, now separate from Link, can help him morph in and out of his wolf form at will. 
This proves to be a great upgrade for the hero, and is one of the key contributors to Lake's victory against Sant and Ganondorf. Heroism prevails nonetheless in most fantasy tales, but the path may have been more difficult for Link were it not for Zant's stupidity. I'm the monster? If you change into the Wolf Link form and start to go around the Hyrule Castle, the townspeople will start screaming and run away from you in fear. Going into the town square eventually causes the castle guards to appear, but they will be too afraid of you as well, just like the average civilians. Attacking them will cause them to drop various items like hearts, rupees, and arrows, and hilariously, the postman will hunt you down to give Link his mail, no matter what, even if it's in his wolf form, which makes no sense since the town people shouldn't be able to recognize him like that. This is most likely an oversight in the game's programming. Ilya's Amnesia One of the most commonly discussed theories for the Twilight Princess is related to Ilya's Amnesia. The question of how she lost her memories just by being hit with an arrow comes up quite often. Especially since it's not like the arrow hit her head or anything. Half of the fans say that the arrow that she was shot with was in fact poisonous, which eventually affected her brain. And the other half simply say that the amnesia can be caused by traumatic experiences which includes other health-related things like strokes as well. So the physical and mental trauma she went through must have caused the memory loss. And last but not least, she fell into the fountain which usually have rocks, so she might have hit her head there as well. There is no official explanation from Nintendo, so anything sounds plausible enough. The Unnoticed Barrier People often wonder why the people in the Hyrule Castle town don't notice the barrier around the castle. Even the guards don't seem to be alarmed by this, and no one seems to notice the giant spider-like creature climbing on the barrier and destroying it either. It's theorized that the barrier is meant to be invisible to normal people, so they can't notice that something is wrong and freak out as a result of this. Some people in the town do seem to sense that something is wrong, like how Goron mentions that the air around the castle feels funny, and someone in the marketplace mentions that it's odd that Princess Zelda hasn't made any public appearances. But all of these are speculations, and the civilians just seem to be kept in darkness, possibly through magic rather than brainwash of any kind. Midna's Awareness one of the darkest theories about the game is how little Midna seems to care about the fact that the shadow beings Link kills throughout the game were once just innocent members of the Twilight. However, it's implied in the game that people from Hyrule can be turned into Twilight creatures as well. So Midna might just know that these shadow beings are from Hyrule and does not care about people that aren't hers. But then this means that Link is killing his countrymen instead and doesn't seem to be affected by it. But there's an explanation for that as well. The hero of A Link to the Past kills mind-controlled knights, so Link generally doesn't seem to care much about killing possessed people. Lastly, some people believe they are indeed Minda's people, but it would have just made the game too dark if she constantly seemed depressed about it. She knows that killing them is necessary, so she doesn't make a big deal out of it and lets Link do his job. While we may never see a true sequel to Twilight Princess, it remains near the top of many players' favorite Zelda games, and it serves as a benchmark for what kind of games Nintendo can create when they are allowed to veer outside of their comfortable PG bubble. Like and subscribe to see more videos like this, and let us know what topics we should cover next.